and perky and nice to lower closer to the knees that's not how it used to be <laughs> to my channel. If you can hear Little Miss Alila, she is a very loud eater. We have just had a nice bum change, haven't we? And now you're having some food. I'm hoping you can hear me over her swallowing, more like gulping, aren't you? You're a gulper. So today we are going to do a postpartum update. I hope the lighting's okay. I've not filmed here before and I know I'm right next to the window, but we're just going to go with it. Again, um, same as the video before, I have so many notes on my phone, so I'm just going to be referring back to that. If you haven't seen my um, birth story, this this is basically a direct follow-on from that. So if you wanted... You okay? So if you wanted to go watch that out before you watch this one, then it kind of follow on and make more sense. Just as a recap, um, my waters broke at 11pm on the 4th of November, and then Lila was born on the 5th of November at 22 minutes past 3 in the afternoon. Um, I gave her, so I was pushing for two hours, um, but I, I could not get her out, so she was born by forceps and I had an episiotomy as well, so that kind of ties in with my recovery um, and then what happened after that. After my episiotomy, obviously I had stitches, I believe I had a second degree tear, I think the third degree is the worst one, they did explain all this to me but I was far too tired, um, but I think I had the second degree tear, it wasn't the worst one, it's why they cut me. Um, but yeah, so that, that was all good. Once we came out of surgery, um, Lila latched straight away, which was amazing. She fed for an hour. I was dozing in and out of sleep because I was that tired. Like, don't, don't worry, she was safe. I had pillows all around like my arm, holding my arm in place so that she was in place. My midwife was there, Luke was there. They were like watching me. Um, but they just let me sleep and then they let Lila feed. Um, I was hooked up to a drip because I'd lost more blood than they, they had liked. So because I was pushing for so long, um, they said that once Lila was out, my, um, what do you call it, my womb, or whatever you want to call it, basically caved in um, and I, I just lost a lot of blood. But it wasn't like ridiculous amounts. Um, so they put me on a drip um, and then I was put on iron tablets straight away to help me with the blood loss. That's, I could tell like for a, a good week or two, that definitely took its toll on me losing that amount of blood. I was on iron tablets and I'm still on iron tablets. Um, I've only got a few left, but for a month, just over a month, Lila is five weeks. She was five weeks yesterday. By the time we see this, she was should be five weeks, five weeks and four days. Um, so I was on blood thinning injections, which I think most people are when they give birth now. So they're just the injections in the stomach, but Luke had to administer them because I am a nightmare when it comes to needles. I remember the first one he tried to give me. I made him, I, I didn't let him do it because I completely freaked out. And then when the midwife came the next day, she showed Luke how to properly do it. Because they just gave you it in the hospital. They didn't really show us what to do. They just gave us it saying, here you go, inject yourself. I was freaking out. Like, you asked Luke. Like, I was I was panicking. Um, so yeah, I was on blood thinning injections. I was on iron tablets. Um, I think that was the only medication at that point. I was on further medication for other things, which I'll explain in a minute. So for the first few hours, I don't really, coming out of theatre, I don't really remember much. I think it was because the amount of gas and air I had, I don't really know. Obviously I had the epidural, I was so tired, I don't really remember much. An hour or two after uh, we'd come out of theatre, I was coming around a bit more, I'd had a little bit of sleep. Uh, midwife made me some toast, which I just wolfed down because I think I was just so hungry. Um, I'd also drank um, a litre of Lucasade that we had bought. Um, I'd also drank water and a cup of tea and that made me feel so much better. Uh, but Luke left at about 9, 10 o'clock that night. Um, what happened after that? Yeah, Luke left about 9, 10 o'clock at night. I was in and out of sleep until about 12 o'clock. And that's when they took me down to the ward where all the other mums were. Um, and then about 2 a.m. So again, did you just trump? Mummy's just changed your bum. I was in and out of sleep from when I got down to the ward, just napping. Um, Lila did not wake like the whole... We had to wake her to feed her. They said because she was early and she was quite jaundiced as well... Um, she was a very, very sleepy baby. Like, all she did was sleep. You didn't... The only other time she cried was when she changed her nappy, and even then she fell asleep halfway through it. Um, so she she let me get loads of sleep. So I was in that sleep for a couple of hours, and then at 2 a.m., they the midwives came, and um, that's when I stood and walked for the first time. Um, I did have a ca did have a catheter due to the um, epidural, and 
So basically they said, do you want to go to the toilet? I said, yeah, but this was to pass a bowel movement, not to um, go for a wee. They left the catheter in until about 9am the next day, I believe. Yeah, the catheter was removed at about 9am, but I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute because that led to me having infections and things like that, but we'll get straight into that. During that time, so, oh, the first, do you know what, I want to say the first few days, the whole time I was in the hospital, it was so hard to get out of bed. It was ridiculously hard. It felt, I don't know how to explain it, it felt like I had loads of weight, like the heaviest weight you could find attached to down there, and it just felt like I, I struggled to move like my whole body. It would just... It was uncomfortable, it hurt, it was painful. Um, but it, to be fair though, not as painful as what I thought. Bearing in mind that I had stitches as well. So it just felt like so much pressure and it was really hard to try and drag myself off the bed. But once I was off the bed and up and walking, I wasn't so bad. I was walking like I'd crap myself, like really bad. I was walking around like I'd absolutely crap myself, but getting out of bed took me a good few minutes. So when Lila did wake up, which wasn't very often, it was hard for me to get to her, getting out of the bed and I, don't think I was positioned well enough to try and get her out of the um, like the crib which is next to you into the bed. I just I wasn't strong enough to do that. So it was hard for me to get in and out, but the midwives were absolutely amazing. So they helped me in and out. They passed me Lila quite a lot. Um so that to be fair, it wasn't as bad as what I thought. So going back to the caster, I had that out at 9 a.m. the following morning. Now my first, what everybody says your first pee really stings and really hurts. But I don't know if it's because I had had the catheter in for so long and it kind of gave my body a little bit of time to heal. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but when I did go for my first pee, like, it didn't hurt at all. It didn't sting. It didn't hurt. It just didn't do anything. Bearing in mind I had stitches as well, it did not hurt at all. Um, but the midwives also gave me, I think it was like two days after, a day or two after being there, they gave me like this lavender water, it came in like this big jug, this lavender water that you pour over down there to like help healing, but then it doesn't dissolve the stitches, which like promotes healing and all this kind of stuff. And it actually really helped, it was so soothing. So if you are in, in England and your hospital uh, provide that, then just take it because it helps so much. The ep no, no, not the epidural, now, once you have the catheter out, I think you have like six hours to go for a pee. Now I went for a pee like within half an hour and it's the weirdest feeling like having the catheter out, it doesn't hurt, I was I was really scared because I thought it would hurt but they tell you to like breathe in and when you breathe in they take it out and it, it's the strangest feeling but going for your first wee after having a catheter I found was really weird because I hadn't peed in so long, it was just really strange. We were all fed, I would say we're burped but we're sure we're burping a bit aren't we so we haven't managed to get a burp up. Have we? I don't know if you can see, but she was wearing the cutest little reindeer outfit. I don't know. Well, that's a sad face. Tell me, tell me, pain. So I can't quite remember where I was. I think I was on about peeing. Was that about peeing? I think I was on about peeing. My first pee. I don't know. I was saying they gave give you six hours to go to the toilet, but I think I went in about half an hour. And like I said, like yeah, I remember saying it didn't hurt at all. Nowhere near to what I thought it would. Um, no uncomfortableness. It was just like peeing normally. Um, although like you don't wipe it's so strange like you don't I don't think about any of this before I had her you can't obviously if you have stitches you can't wipe so you've just got to so I use baby wipes to like freshen up down there instead of toilet roll because obviously toilet roll can be quite harsh um, and then I also use the water that they gave me um, and then I use this is, is it freedom mum free mum I can't remember I don't know if, I don't think I've got it with me um, it's where you like it's this foam that you spray in your underwear and my god it soothes down there so much like I would 100% recommend that I, if I was telling the world I would get like 10 of those because that was absolutely amazing this is like one of the last things of going like in the hospital so um, once I had the epidural started to wear off this was like from the very start for I think it was up to about uh, about a week I think it was my body had never itched so much in my entire life my back, it felt like I had ants crawling out of my skin. My back was so itchy, my bed, like, back, all over my body was just ridiculous. Like, I thought something was wrong with me, I itched that much, but it's just the epidural wearing off. It was the worst. <laughs> like, the pain was bad down there, but the itching I found was just the worst out of the whole thing. So moving on to going home. Now, the first thing that I did once we had walked through those doors and settled Lila was I got in the shower. The showers at the hospital, yeah, they're fine, but... This not like showering at your own home. I had literally, I jumped in the shower, I washed my hair, I shaved every part of my body that I had not been able to reach in a good few months. 
um, I'd shaved everywhere, I exfoli exfoliated everywhere, I'd washed my hair, brushed my teeth, cleaned out my ears, just literally everything because I just felt so, even though I showered at the hospital, I felt so dirty and like I just, I put on fresh clothes, obviously fresh underwear and I had never, like I had never felt so good in my entire life. If I felt like a new woman just washing all the hospital dirt off me and it was just, it was the best feeling in the world. It was the weirdest experience as well, going in the shower at home and not having your bump it was so strange so obviously i had this big bar to me it was a huge bump i've not been able to see anything past my belly in a good few months i've not been able to shave in places for a while um it was just so so strange and i i really look i feel like i'm really lucky that my bump went down really quick um are you holding mommy's hand are you awake are you waking up oh no back to sleep I'm really lucky that I was so I I was so scared that I would be so upset and disappointed like in my body after having her. I don't honestly don't know why. I was scared that I would hate my body. But I had never loved my body so much in my entire life, knowing that I had brought her into this world. Like I've heard I've looked watched so many of these videos before I had her and thought, Yeah, yeah, you're just saying that. Um or I'm I won't feel that I'm not that type of person. But I actually did, like I was so like I looked at my body and thought I went from having this huge bump down to this tiny it wasn't tiny but this this smaller version of this bump and my body just felt amazing like I felt amazing in my body so once I got home the adrenaline of obviously having her being in hospital had worn off I was really struggling with being tired now I think this was because of having her the amount of blood that I lost she was close to feeding every hour throughout the night for the first two nights I think it was so I was just absolutely exhausted now when, so I slept, we laid in quite a lot to be fair, I had a lie in, I think until about 11 o'clock some days, which obviously helped, but I would get up, and I would, I'd, looking back now, I'm thinking like, what an idiot, but I would try and carry on like my, like my normal life, like not my normal life, but the amount of energy that I would normally have, so I'd get up, I'd go for a shower, wash my hair, tidy the house, and obviously feed Lila and everything, but by... The time I'd got out of the shower and started putting around a little bit, I was exhausted. Like nobody tells you how tired you are. I don't know if it's a recovery, I don't know what it was. But it was awful. Like I am a type of person that is up on the go all the time. To the point where it does I don't want to say it causes me problems, but I can never relax. I can't just sit down and chill and watch a film because I have to be doing something, I have to be cleaning, I have to be doing the washing. I'm just that type of person. Although I wish I wasn't, I wish that I could be as chilled as like safe loop. He could chill all day. I just can't switch off. I really honestly wish I could, but I can't. But anyway, this is something I really struggled with because I wasn't prepared for that. I don't know why I wasn't prepared for that. So I just had a baby. She was up every hour of the night. I don't know why I wasn't prepared. I didn't prepare myself for that. I was expected to come home, look after her, still do all the housework and everything, like a week postpartum. That don't happen. So please prepare yourself. You just, you need to sleep. And another thing I want to talk about is everybody says sleep when they sleep. Yes, they do, don't they? Everybody says sleep when they sleep. Now, I tried this, and if anything, doing this put me in a... Not... I don't know how to explain it. It got me really down. Like, I put that much pressure on myself to sleep when she slept during the day that I got myself frustrated so I couldn't sleep, and then I got mad at myself, and then I was worried that I wasn't getting enough sleep when she was sleeping, and it just... I put so much pressure on myself to sleep when she slept. Just sleep when you feel like you need to sleep. Don't get me wrong, like, I was tired, but I just couldn't, I had so much on my mind, I just couldn't nap throughout the day. So yeah, don't put too much pressure on yourself to sleep. Obviously, just sleep when you feel like you need sleep. Relax when you feel like you need to relax. Don't, don't do what I did and think I have to sleep when she sleeps, otherwise I'm never going to sleep again. Like, don't do that. Obviously, I slept when she slept at night, but during the day, I just, I think as well, because it's winter, it gets dark at four o'clock, well, sometimes three o'clock now. And if you don't get up till a bit later because um, your little one's been awake all night, you don't feel like you've had any of the day and then you feel like you're going back to sleep again. So during the day, I really wanted to make use of it, go for walks. But just don't put too much pressure on yourself because that's what I did. And I think the first few days of being home, it really got me down. I remember, I don't, obviously my hormones were all over the place. But I remember actually trying to sleep on the sofa because I couldn't, I came to bed, couldn't fall asleep. So I thought if I lie on the sofa with Luke, watch a film, Lila's asleep, obviously with us. Uh, maybe I'll fall asleep and then I just remember just lying on the sofa crying because I'd put that much pressure on myself to fall asleep that I could not fall asleep so I know it sounds silly but just don't 
don't have any expectations. If you want a nap, go for a nap. If you want to stay up, stay up. Everybody stop telling <laughs> first time mums to sleep when they sleep because it just put too much pressure on me to try and sleep when they slept. And even people do it say it's to this day. I mean, she's five weeks old. Do you sleep when she sleeps? No, I like, I sleep when she sleeps at night, but not during the day because some people just can't. So another physical thing that happened that I didn't expect. So from the minute I got home, every night I would wake up like literally dri full on dripping in sweat. The bed sheets would be wet. I'd never like sweated that much in my entire life and it was gross. I don't know if it was the hormones. I don't know what it was, but it stopped now. But for the first, I want to say a week or two, it was, I was just constantly sweating. Now I find that I sweat a lot more during the day than I do at night. So I feel like I'm sweating now, but I'll just be, I'll walk to the car and I'll be sweating. What are, these, what are these hormones about? Because I will literally just start sweating for no reason. This would constantly make me feel like I need a shower. And then because obviously I've had COVID, I've still not got my proper like sense of smell back. I constantly feel like I smell. I don't know if I do. I apologize to people if I do, but I don't know if I smell. I feel like I smell all the time because I'm sweating. And then because I'm breastfeeding as well, like I've got a lot of milk and my milk just, it just goes everywhere. So I feel like if I'm not sweating and I'm covered in breast milk and then I'm sticky, so I need a shower. So as a new mom, I constantly feel dirty, all the time. I feel like I just need to live in the shower because I'm just a ball of smell and dirt. A ball of smell and dirt. The other thing was itching around my stitches down there during the night drove me up the wall. It would only be at night, but I would feel that because obviously when things heal, they, I don't know why, I don't know, am I just making this up? I think I might be making this up, but I'm sure I got told when things start to heal, if they start to itch, then that means they're healing well. But down there, honestly, I just wanted to scratch my stitches off. Does that, sound, does that sound gross? Obviously, I didn't scratch them, but the need to scratch them was just insane. Like, they were so itchy. It was horrible. I'd be during the night. I'd be laid there sweating. My stitches would itch, and my boobs would be leaking everywhere, and I was just a mess. A sweaty, itchy, sticky, ball of mess, smells and mess. Is how I describe the first few weeks of postpartum, if I'm honest. A, f a week following postpartum. Oh no. You can't have that now, can you? No. So this is a week following postpartum. I woke up with a horrific backache. Um, I was just in a lot of pain and I really, I obviously didn't feel well anyway, but I didn't feel, I felt even worse. Turns out I had a water infection and this was from um, the catheter. Uh, so I had a water infection and I was on antibiotics for a week, I think it was a week and then it came back again and then I was on further medication for another 10 days um, which I then had to watch Lila because I was put, what was I put on? Penicillin I think I was put on um, but because I was breastfeeding I needed to watch Lila make sure she didn't come out in any rashes because there's some traces of the antibiotic that goes into Lila, but she was absolutely fine. And then my water infection cleared up, but that really knocked me for six, especially with like feeling drained from losing a lot of blood. Iron tablets that help with my blood. I just, I was knocked for six. I was so tired. I didn't feel very well at all. And the backache with like the water infection was awful. And with the water infection as well, I've never experienced this with a water infection, but it hurt to sit down. It hurt my pole when I sat down. It was so strange. It like I couldn't sit in certain I couldn't sit in certain positions because I had stitches, and then I couldn't sit in other certain stitches. Stitches. Sit in different positions because of my pee hole hurting because of the water infection. So it was just a whole another experience. It really was. So fast forwarding to now, we are no actually no, fast forwarding to a few days ago. So around four and a half weeks, I'd say um, I would have been with Lila. Um, I don't know if. I, this is my period I don't know if this is just like delayed bleeding from the birth I'm assuming it's my period because it's just over four weeks from having Lila and obviously I'm breastfeeding so they say that you may get a period you may not get a period I have the lightest bleeding like to the point where I'm only wearing a panty line it's that light so I woke up one morning I think it was four weeks and a few days I was postpartum um I woke up and I said to look oh, I've got period pain and it almost felt like once you have, like when the, you have the contractions of your uterus shrinking, like just after giving birth, it kind of felt like that. Painful, but not too painful. And um, they were coming and going throughout the day. And then two days after that, that's when I started getting a light bleeding, like very light. I'm only wearing a panty line. I'm still bleeding now, but again, very light. The lightest period I've ever had in my life. I don't know if that's for breastfeeding. 
don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm so thankful that I have not had a monstrosity of a period like I normally would because that hurts. And I don't miss that in the slightest. Talking of now, so we are, as of recording this, we are five days and one week old and five days and one week postpartum. How do I feel? So I've had a lot of questions from you guys, you asked me on Instagram and I've kind of fed them into um, everything that I've said so far, but I'm just going to answer a few questions now. So a lot of you asked, how do I feel now physically? So physically, I still get tired. Um, there'll be days where I have so much energy and I will get up and I'll start doing things and then by like one o'clock I need to nap again. But like I said, I'm the type of person that I won't nap, I will just find stuff to do because that's the type of person I am. I wish I wasn't, I wish I could just chill, but I'm not, I'm just, I just need to do stuff all the time. So that's how I feel now, like physically I can get tired, some days I can feel like I'm running a marathon and then other days not. My stitches have healed perfectly, like when, I'm gonna be completely honest, when they first started healing, I looked at them and I thought, that's not how it used to be. But once it's healed, like if you've had stitches, don't look, just don't look at them for the first few days, don't. Don't do it to yourself. Because I did, Luke did, and we were a bit like, damn, that's changed. And I remember thinking, whoa, that is not how that looked before. That is different. And Luke said the same thing. So I started to worry like, oh my God, it's changed. But honestly, don't look at, just if I would, one piece of advice I would give you is don't look at your stitches for the first week or two, because there's no difference now. I think I have like a tiny red line, um, that's a bit of a scar, but there is no different down there whatsoever. Like, it looks the exact same as it did before. So don't stress yourself out about that. Even if it does look different, don't worry about it. You just pushed a baby out or pulled a baby out or C-section or however you birthed. You've just done that. Give your body some credit. Just do you have stretch marks from the birth? Now, not from the birth, for the whole um, pregnancy. Yes, I. to be fair, I feel like... So my stretch marks weren't that bad once I came home. But over the past couple of weeks, I feel like my stretch marks have got worse. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if that's just because my belly's gone down a little bit more now. But I'll post, I'll put a photo here of my stretch marks. So I have them kind of like the bottom of my belly. Um, on my hips, I've got them as well. Sorry, I had to take a pause there. Lila wanted some more food. I can't remember what question I was on. I remember doing the downstairs question. I remember what question we was on. We was on the stretch marks question. So yeah, I'll pop a photo here of the stretch marks that I have. So I have almost like, so I have some on both sides of my hips, almost identical. And it generally looks like, Luke says, what is Luke? Luke calls them like tiger stripes or something. It generally looks like somebody's got a claw and just dug them into either side of my hips. Um, and then I've got some on my belly. And I've also got some on like my pubic area, like my pubic bone area. Um, so I've got those, which to be fair, I feel like the past, since I've come home, I feel like they've got worse. Well, over the past couple of weeks, I feel like I've got worse. I don't know if that's just because my stomach's shrinking. Um, I honestly don't know. But they honestly, they don't bother me at all. I thought they would. I remember when I first got my first stretch mark during the pregnancy. I don't know how far gone I was, but I remember for days I was so upset. I was like, oh, my body's ruined. I can't believe it. And although that obviously you appreciate being pregnant and everything, you're still allowed to mourn your previous, your like, old body. But I, I don't, as of yet, I don't hate my stretch marks. I don't, I don't know, I just, I just don't think about them. Like when I look at my stomach, I'm, I just, they just, they're there. I feel like they've always been there, but they haven't. I've always had stretch marks, just like white stretch marks. They're just through like growing as you get older and things like that. But like these, to be fair, my stretch marks are getting like a lot darker now, but it doesn't bother me at all. So I'm so thankful that I've had that mentality of being thankful for my body and bringing this little angel into the world. Somebody else has asked, do you fit into the clothes, pre your pre-pregnancy clothes? Now, yes and, yes and no, yes. Some things I do, some things I don't. Like these, all of this was pre-pregnancy. When I first came home, I fit into like two pairs of jeans out of the, I don't know, like eight pairs that I have. I just fit into a couple of pairs of jeans and then there was other ones that I didn't even want to try getting into because that was not happening certain tops that I fit into all my tops but I don't feel like I felt good in my tops if you know what I mean I, I kind of just thought they were a bit tight they fit but they were too tight and not comfortable and um, but as the days goes on I'm starting to fit into pretty much all my clothes now especially all I wear is leggings like this is the first time I've worn jeans in so long I just live in leggings well that's all you need when you're a mum and you just want to cheer around the house when you've got babies to look after you've got things to do that's what you want to do it's just comfort have your boobs changed much now 
it's so strange. So obviously I breastfeed, so my boobs have changed. My boobs have stayed bigger. My nipples have got darker. Like I think I'm not too sure if they do in every pregnancy. I think they do. Um, but my nipples have obviously got darker. But I don't remember what my boobs looked like before pregnancy, or po or before baby. Like I don't remember at all. So yes, they've changed, but I don't know how much they've changed and what they've changed from. Do you get what I mean? So yes, my like, and also when. <laughs> As you're breastfeeding, obviously they're fuller, they're firmer when they've got milk in. When Lila has a feed, they droop. And let's not lie, let's not pretend like this doesn't happen. So my boobs went from being perky and nice to lower, closer to the knees. <laughs> but that is okay. That's what like, that's what boobs are for. Like I've had such an experience. I'm going to do a whole different story on breastfeeding. But I've had such an experience with um, breastfeeding. And going from thinking your boobs are one thing to actually knowing that they're for something else. Like my, I don't look at my boobs as anything other than Lila's breakfast, Lila's dinner, Lila's dinner. That's all I look at them as now. And I think we've been brought up in a generation where everybody, not everybody, but most people think boobs are so like so so sexualized. And before I was like, yeah, they they've got to look perky, they've got to look nice. And now all I think of are they full? Are they feeding Lila enough? That's all I think about. I don't care if they're droopy. I don't care if my nipples are darker. I don't care if I've got stretch marks on them. I don't care about any of that as long as they're doing the job that they're intended to do and that is to feed my baby. So yes, my boobs have changed. They've got saggier. They've got darker. Do I care? Not really. Does Luke care? No. Does Lila care? She's all she's getting fed. That's all she cares about. And th there was more questions, but I'm going to end it here because I'm going to end it on this one because I'm getting very tired. I think it's one of those days where it's like, it's 11 o'clock. And I've got up, I've got ready, I've done some cleaning, I've fed Lila, I've got Lila dressed and now I'm recording this and now I'm absolutely knackered. It's 11 o'clock and I've still got other things that I need to do, but that's fine. We'll, we'll take it slowly today. So the last question was, has, have you experienced hair loss yet? And I don't think this properly, properly happens for, I think, four or five months, I don't think. Um, but I have started, my hair has started to fall out, not drastically, but I have noticed it started to fall out more than usual. I don't know if that's hormones, I don't know if that's just me being like, me being scared of it happening, so thinking it's happening, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I feel like I started to fall out a little bit more, but it's not the end of the world. I know that I probably will, when it starts to fall out quite a bit, I probably will struggle because I've got thin hair anyway. I know it's, they say that it's like, it's the hair that grew or didn't fall out, so it shouldn't make a difference, but I am quite scared that I'm, because I have, I don't know if you guys know, but I have got a bob patch here, like we laugh and joke about it, but I'm worried that that's either gonna get bigger or I'm gonna get more bob patches around my hair. Um, but we will see. We will see. It's all going to be worth it, obviously. But we will see what the next journey brings. That's it from me today. I'll probably do another postpartum update in another month or another two months. Obviously, this is, I want to say, that a one month postpartum, even over five weeks. Um, stuck an extra week in there. But that is it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you got it this far, then well done. Congratulations you're my favourite so much don't forget to hit that like button don't forget to subscribe turn on that post notification bell and stick around i'm sure we'll have so much more content coming up in the next few weeks next few months next few years however long i do this for but that's great thank you so much bye